everyone. Hi. It's Kim and Jen. Jen and Kim. Yep. From the <laughs> Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in Belfast, PEI, Prince Edward yeah. Island, Canada. On Canada Day. Yes, it's Canada Day, July 1st. Yes. So we're recording on July 1st. Yes. But you won't see this until July 3rd. Which is the day before July 4th. Right. Which is your Canada Day. Wow. That's <laughs> <laughs> In case you don't know what Canada Day is about, it's, it's the, the same, same thing the 4th as of the July. 4th of July. Celebrating yeah. the birth of our nation. Right. Yes. Anyway, so Except that's it. can't celebrate. But yeah. That's fine. Well, you know, celebrating a In part silence. together. In silence. <laughs> anyway, no, no fireworks or anything else. Celebrating really going in on. our hearts. Okay. Yeah. So. And you uh, can tell by your hair and mine that it's very humid. Yeah. I have full David Lee Roth. Potentially yeah. happening. Have yours back though. I but I, I kind of rein it in. I'm thinking the fluffier that mine gets, the slimmer it makes me look. The bigger the hair, the slimmer the. Okay. Well, <laughs> there might you might be onto something. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. So it's hot as anything. Sticky. Yeah, but today it rained, so we're very happy about yes. the rain. Yes. Very. Thankful. And it did seem to uh, clear the air a little bit when it rained, so that's good. Really? A little bit. <laughs> not quite not quite as sticky as it was. I couldn't even knit on my paisley hardly because it was literally sticking to my hands. So I was yeah. preferring knitting with the cotton for and sure. And my cereal went stale right in the box. Oh. So well, humid. we always put it in a Ziploc. Mm, of course you do. Yeah. That's Over at your place you've yeah. got your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky I have cereal or uh, groceries of any type. Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Uh, we have a, we have a farm update, sort of, with a little video. People are asking about videos and stuff, so we have, yeah. we have one. So we're, you know, are we going to show that right away yeah. or are we going to talk about it first? We'll show the video. Well, what happened was we have a new helper who's yeah. volunteering to help with her veterinary school application. That's right. Heather. Yeah. And she's six feet tall. <laughs> I don't know. Seems like it. And, <laughs> and, and doesn't weigh much. Yeah. <laughs> so, and she's not a sheep person. But she doesn't know anything about sheep. She's, That's why she wanted to come here. Right. She does ride horses, but yep. not super experienced with the no. pranging throng that is a flock of sheep. Yes, a hungry yes. flock. So it was what time to call it a fr- thranging flong. Of no, no. <laughs> pranging, 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 H R A N G. Okay, pranging Haranging. throng of sheep. Right. Say that ten times. I fast. think pranging is a word. I think so. Might be a maritime thing. Yeah. Don't know. No. Uh, anyway, so she came out and I don't know who was involved in giving her the job of carrying the bucket. She had the longest legs. Ah! <laughs> so when you try to move the sheep, you carry a white bucket and you're basically a walking target. That's what that's for. They go crazy. You're supposed to try to stay sort of in front of them. In front of the running throng of yeah. running... Yeah, it's without she, running because she, once you start running, they get really excited yeah. and then they just kind of... With take, Sweet Marie the linebacker right in the lead. Yeah, always. Who is known for plowing down fences and people at will. Yes, that's so, right. So, <laughs> obviously, you handed Heather the bucket? Yeah. Okay, well, let's just watch the little and video. And I said, just walk quickly that way. That's, that's her instruction. That's the part you're willing to admit to. Yeah. I heard more from where I was going. Oh, okay. Oh, then I don't remember what I said. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's just go watch the video because it's cute. I'm oh, little yeah. sheep going to their new pasture. So excited. Yeah. Grocery day. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so that was the video. So okay. what you probably couldn't hear was, well, first of all, before I started recording and Heather walked out to the field, she was back by me and she's like, wow, I hope I can run faster than them. I've never done this before. And, <laughs> and like, what happens if they catch up to me and, and all this? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, they might go past you. They usually know where they're going or mm-hmm. whatever. So then she gets up closer to Kim and I hear her asking Kim the same thing. Well, how far ahead of them should I be? And I'm kind of nervous. I haven't run with sheep before. And here's Kim's super sympathetic answer. Just don't drop the bucket. <laughs> well, she would have gotten mobbed if she drops the bucket. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Just don't well, drop the bucket. That's good advice. That's good advice. She would have got trampled if she goes down. If she goes I mean, down, she's going to get trampled. <laughs> the level of reassurance. Yeah. Just keep going with the, <laughs> the, the sympathy of the fears. That's Don't the, drop the bucket. That's my superpower. Then her palms are probably sweaty <laughs> after that. That's your superpower? Empathy. Empathy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my. Anyway, as you can see, she did not drop the bucket, nor no. did she get plowed over. They no. just kind of went around her and went past her. Yeah, they were like, okay, we know where we're going. Right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming, Heather. Yeah. Well, it went pretty smoothly. It she it went so smoothly that she thinks that we actually know what we're doing. Probably right. Wow. Ha, ha, ha. Until now, yeah. If yeah. she's watching this, <laughs> which I doubt. However, yeah. yeah, that was funny. Don't drop the bucket. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was sage advice. That's clear. Okay. Yeah. She didn't bother to ask what happens if you drop the bucket. She just started walking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think one of us might have said, well, your legs are quite a bit longer than theirs, so don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. They can probably run twice as fast. Yeah. You've ever tried to catch a sheep. They're yeah. motivated and know exactly where they're going. Not easy. They're, they're fairly uh, limber. Yes. For things whose body... Their little stilts don't look like they could even no. hold up their bodies. No. We have a couple injuries. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about little stilts, I think we have a couple of little skinny ankles that get twisted. We have them right. uh, we feed like everything that's possible to feed in the on the farm. So we just moved them to the hedgerow, but there was some like winter fall and stuff like that in the hedgerow and I think um one or two of the girls might have twisted twisted an ankle. ankle and they're well, they're fine. It's not even really swollen, but they they have a little bit of a limp. They're still they're putting weight on it and everything, so it's not really. We move them to a smoother place now. Yes, yeah, so moving today. them all the time, every three or four days, every group, each group. Yeah, something like that. Although yeah. they have a big space now, so the grass is so high that I was saying to Jennifer this morning, if it, somebody goes down, we might not find them till the, <laughs> till the, the die off in the fall because right. it's really, it's really high, but they've got lots of food. They yeah. always go for the clover first. Yeah. Yeah. They Picking eat like 20 out. flowers and nothing else. And yeah. Then, oh, they get frantic with delight about all the selection. Yeah. They're just like at the buffet table like yeah. this. Yeah. And then they eventually calm they down calm and down. just set and into proper eating. You, you can see what they like because that's the first to go over yeah. the whole space that they have. Then the next thing is the next thing that they like. The layers of color the layer. gradually disappear. Yeah. <laughs> All the purple will be gone by tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And then the yellow. Yellow. Which is foil. bird foot, bird's foot trefoil. Yeah. So that'll be gone. And then Timothy will be the last yeah. It's like it stands and stops right. or whatever. And, then and leaving to... that for a few more days is not going to increase its palatability. No. The sheep have it under control, I'm yeah. sure. They all look like they... Anyway, are. so that's moving the sheep. That's just pretty much it. It's a bucket, yeah. a few extra safety barriers around, maybe fences. Sometimes it's the lawnmower. Depends on where yeah. <laughs> what we've got just hanging around. Make a visual barrier. Yeah. yeah. Truck trucks yeah. they pretty much know where the various fields are at this point though yeah i mean sweet marie obviously knows all the tricks right well she went over there all on her own yeah as you recall from previous episodes right so yeah. she knows and then they all follow her because surprisingly while not being the most aerodynamic she is one tank. of the fastest she's the tank <laughs> she's the most motivated she's got a lot of horsepower yeah all right yeah <laughs> good Okay, whip right. time. Oh, wow, okay, we're going right to that. All yeah. right, so who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. So I didn't do anything on my Teradale hat. I've been working on this. Which, do you remember what Jennifer Beale said to pronounce this? Oh, pa- was that Jennifer Beale that said that? Yeah. Pa- oh, okay. Pa-bye? Uh, I don't know. Pa-bye? I don't know. 
Pi Bay. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look. Pa Bay. Pa Bay. But I'm sure there's like more like, of an pa-bye. accent. But Pa. Pa Bay. Pa Bay. There's, there's probably some throat sound that goes probably. along with it. Probably. All right, so, anyways, that's our best attempt. Yeah. And Sam is a man. Yes. For those who watched last time. We got a tweet. He's a bloke. He tweeted. Yeah. He's a bloke. And he has his own Instagram, apparently. Or Twitter, sorry. All right, so... His own, tw- his own Twitter? Yeah. For well, when she, design? Well, no, when she replied, she uh, tagged his Twitter account. Oh, okay. So anyway, I knit on this, and believe it or not, it's double the size that it was. Right. It's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised how long it's taking, yeah. to be honest. That's nice. But I'm loving it. And, of course, the color is beautiful and uh, just carrying on with that. Looks and that's like crushed strawberries. All, yeah. That's not... That's almost all I got done. Yeah. So, I don't know what to say about that. It's stocking it. So, I'm carrying on. Then, I got a little bit done on my darkness swatch. But I'll be honest, I got halfway through it and I fell asleep and took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in other days, in earlier days, I probably would have just bound this off here and yeah. called it a day. But I think I'll finish my nice square swatch in yeah. this case. Can I feel the fabric? Yeah, and it's oh, like knitting oh. with fuzzy caterpillars. Yeah, it's nice. I don't even know how they make this yarn. You're... I don't understand for a minute how that brushed fleece is hanging on there, oh. but it really is. I don't know. We'll have to find out. It's amazing. It's uh, It feels really nice. It's not heavy. No. No, that's the whole idea. It's very light and warm and fluffy. Yeah. So this is the headland color, mm-hmm. and uh, somebody Zane said that was the overwhelming. Choice oh my for... gosh! Like ninety eight percent of the people wanted me to make this color. What do we yeah. think so far? Yeah, it's nice. I don't care. This to me, this I want to call it a cloak, even mm-hmm. though I know it's a cardigan. Well, hoodie, hoodie, yeah. cardigan, whatever. But I mean, the more sort of Cruella Deville it is, the more I like it. <laughs> this is my my cloak of mystery. Yeah. So it's a very rich color, obviously, mm-hmm. and uh, somebody else already ordered, I think, the yarn to make yeah. this along with me, and we're going to get more of this in. Yeah. Um, so if, you know, if it's starting this to appeal... Headland. Headland, yeah. Yeah. It's a really rich burgundy, like an aubergine. Well, not as yeah. blue as aubergine, No, it's, it's quite nice. red, but very yeah. dark brick and black. Yeah. Now, counting these are gonna, is going to be interesting, yeah. given they're fuzzy caterpillars, and also it's almost black. Yeah. Good luck. We'll have fun with Get that. Get that sorted out. And speaking of that, we just want to give a shout out to the lovely Karen who sent us her copy of Still, which yeah. was where that design was originally published. And this book is now out of print. Yeah. Um, but is that a whole suit? Yeah. You knit, There's you knit some a whole really suit? Oh, oh yeah. wow. There's some okay. really nice projects in here. I'm not going to show them because you can't make them because it's now out of print. Um, but here's the darkness here. Oh, she's Oh, she got a little, uh, a little enjoy thing, and she put in there. Yeah. How sweet! Yeah, very thoughtful. So appreciate having this book. Yeah. Um, because of course Kim Hargraves is amazing, and right. there's some really nice designs in this one too. Mm-hmm. And as we mentioned last time, Andrea from Fruity Knitting made I think three things out of here yeah. all together. So thank you, Karen, for sending that along. And yeah. <laughs> I think the her trip to the UPS store was a bit more of an adventure than. Uh, she expected so that does take quite a bit of effort yes and it's costly to ship things so yeah. it's very generous yeah. and we uh, really appreciate if it. you haven't shipped parcels you should try it yeah we do it every day <laughs> not I as think, fun as it sounds i think people uh have some kind of uh, all right as i would if I, we weren't doing it yeah. because i can remember when we shipped our first one i, I was yeah. like holy smokes it's not really straightforward it's a rigmarole. Yeah, and we have to do labels here because yeah. we're not standing at the post office having the no. uh, the postmistress. No, thank our, goodness our for friend. that. Yeah, and, Connie. And, uh, thank goodness for that invention. Yeah. Do your own labels at home because they didn't always have that. No. I know. Yeesh. But it's, uh, you know, between the measuring and the weighing and the, like, getting it all straight, it's, it's, uh, and, I mean... When you ship something, you find out exactly what the cost is, too. Yeah. Which is pretty... Shipping is really expensive. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah. Anyway. So, anyway, I guess that's... if you, if you uh, put it against uh, have, you know, having things delivered to your door versus what it actually costs you to go and get stuff, I guess, in the end, it's all, all kind of expensive these days, but... Right. Anyway. And gas and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, th- that's what I worked on this week. Mm-hmm. 
before I forget, because I just heard my feet scrape on the floor here, that somebody was asking about what that noise was on the last uh, oh, really? episode. So yeah, so we tape our kind of our little agenda to the um, back the of tripod. the iPad. Yeah, yeah, at the back of the iPad, and uh, it was blowing around the last time. Yeah. So that's what that sound. Yeah. The sound, if you heard it. So it was right by the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So today we tape both. And then, yes. So now hopefully it's silent except yep. for our voices. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> so, you know, you learn so much. Every yeah. episode there's some kind of technical issue yes. pretty well. Although it was really funny. This was funny. Did you read the comment this morning from somebody that's watching old episodes? Because they went, they're oh, starting their the Ramia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you, what was that? Episode three? She it started? said episode eight or something. Oh, yeah. okay. Or four maybe. Episode yeah. four. So uh, there's a funny, funny story. Yeah. Uh, when we were still using the iPhone. Yeah, so because oh, you want them to go back and watch it? You're not going to tell them what it is? Oh, yeah, well, I can tell you. If you want to see it, then it well, went on for three weeks. My lens it? was cracked, and there was poop in it. So yeah. there was a brown spot on our what, someone's face every episode. Yeah. Or we tried to train it in here. It was really yeah. bad. That was an ordeal. Yeah. We've come a long way. And people were scratching the screen thinking that they had something on their own screen. And she yeah. said, I can't believe I got duped again right <laughs> I guess she started to scratch it she forgot it was on the lens yeah all, all right. right so i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna show paisley first i really haven't worked too much on it i did a couple rows but i am um just about to do the last decrease for the waist and then i start the increases again so uh, there's not really much to see but people looking want bigger to see. though yeah it is it's it's um quite long around but I find it goes fast. I, I don't know. I find it's um, because it's the wool and I like to knit on metal, metal needles. It is just the right um, kind of roughness versus the smoothness of the needles that I can knit, re get going pretty quick with it. Whereas on my cotton, it's pretty slippery on the, mm. on the, um, on the metal needles. So it actually is a tiny bit slower, I think, mm -hmm. to go. But anyway. Well, and I don't know why this always reminds me of the forum, but we should update on our forum. We're going to switch forum formats. We are? Yes. Okay. So the community forum, you know, we were sort of beta testing it and it's been really, really fun. However, the, the app that we selected or I selected to use, it doesn't allow inline replies. Right. So all the replies go to the bottom, no matter how many other topics have come up in the middle. And that's just not going to work for us. No. So thank you so much to everybody who's gone in. Yeah. If we switch, we probably are going to lose the history. Oh, okay. Um, but we'll just start over. And of course, we'll re-enter our projects and stuff like yeah. that. But um, it's not that you can't go in there now and add some stuff. We're still looking at it. But we just a heads up, we're going to switch the format mm -hmm. around a little bit so that we can start do we know, it. Do we have a format in mind or no. we're still looking still for Still looking. Okay. Trying to decide to make sure we don't make the same mistake So again. when I put your name in front of my replies, that's because... I want to make sure you can find <laughs> Yeah, you can't actually reply in line. So that's yeah. just not going to work once the volume of stuff gets to yeah. be so big. So. Yeah. So there's quite a few messages in the Paisley yeah. thing. And people are uh, knitting lots of um, patterns from Sitzel. So. so that's really fun. We don't want to miss yeah. out on that. So no. I need to pick a new one really soon, and but I, I don't want to... back because I, I'm mesmerized by these lovely mm -hmm. little waffles. It's all lovely. Yeah, it is really nice. So... Okay, well, it's great. It's, it's fun to do. Say you're making fun or quick progress. Yeah. I'm just going to avoid putting things right next to the microphone. Okay. okay. So then I start at my sleeves for my Cornwallis. Okay. And, as we said already once today, every day is a school day. Right. But probably so. <laughs> no. So I decided I'm going to do the sleeves two at a time. No big deal. They're flat, so it's not a big deal to do them two at a time. So I have a ball of white for each of the, the sleeves. And then I had a brand new ball of navy. And I have, a, I have an extra one, but I wasn't sure how far the navy was going to go because I had a little bit left over from where I did the body. And then I have a brand new ball to start the sleeves. And I was thinking I might even be able to get both the sleeves out of the one ball. So I didn't want to open both balls just because that's makes sense sort of the way that I am. So I thought, well, I'll just pull since the, with the um, summer light DK, you are able to pull from the center and from the outside. So I thought, well, I'll just pull from the center and from the outside. But in the center, it's all balled up in there. 
So I had Why? to pull out, a, a, well, because it's just the way it's wound, I okay. guess. It's not like when you have your Nasta pin, it's all right, smooth right. and like even inside. Okay. So when I went to pull out the center part of the ball, a big clump of wool came out, or wool yarn came out, cotton yarn. And so I thought, okay, well, this is not ideal, but I'll just wind back and make a little tiny ball and I'll set that inside the hole. <laughs> <I'm gonna have laughs> so you see where I'm going here? Yeah, this sounds All complicated. Right. <laughs> all right. So it works, but I had to get through all of that stuff that came out because, and it was loose everywhere. So everything was getting tangled. The amount of time that I'm saving by doing two at a time on um, the needles, <laughs> I'm spending unwinding and untangling. untangling. Yeah. So then I thought, there's got to be a solution to this. And I re remembered our cocoa knit mesh, mesh bags. So I put my single ball in here mm -hmm. and I've got my one coming from the center right. and my one coming. And then I put the two ends separate right. it with the little snap. Now you can't do that with a regular yarn bowl. No. There's no way to put separate That's two right. ends. And this is going to keep the keep it from tangling yeah. up. Because what was happened when it tangles up with the white, that's one thing because you've got a ball and you can just untangle it. When it was tangling up on itself, the two, one from the, the end from the, there's the, a fox just running. Oh, wow. Oh, she's coming over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> so familiar. Pooped right behind my car tire. Yeah, so she's very... Uh, becoming very familiar. And we were really careful not to feed them or leave stuff out that uh -uh, the never. fox would get because people uh, do that and it's really not, not good to have them too acclimatized. But she's... No, uh, as evidenced by missing pets and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that's probably not a fox. They said that right. you looked it up this morning because she is she was around with the cat this morning. Right. And um, the fox was around. The fox cat. was yeah. around the cat, the Clyde, the barn cat. Right. And so Ken looked it up, and they said they really wouldn't touch an adult cat because a weight, if as long as the adult cat weighs more than five pounds, they're getting pretty close to the same weight. And the cat actually, a big fox weighs five pounds. It's really it's not she's not big, eh? When we saw so her this fluffy. morning, I know she's she. They don't weigh five pounds; they right. weigh a little bit more than that. But they're not really a match for an adult cat huh. that with claws and stuff like that. Right. Huh. So, but they said like kittens and other small right. animals. Like, it wouldn't be great if Paige ran into it, right? For example, our rabbit. Paige weighs more than the cat. <laughs> yeah, by <laughs> double. I know, but she doesn't. She doesn't. I actually like to fight, so I don't know. The fox might... would get a hold of her and be like, Oop. "Yeah." Oh my god. What is here? Anyway, you're made of lead. Anyway, I watched her this morning and she caught a mouse. Oh, okay. The fox. Good for her. She just bound it like that. So oh, wow. as long as we don't have anything that they could eat, like chickens or anything. Right. I'm, I'm She's okay a with beautiful it. little one. I think we yeah. should call her Vanessa. Okay, that's it. That's it from now. There's two. Oh. I think that's the more white one. Okay. And then there's a darker one. So I don't know if they're mates or if it's the two. Okay. We've got two families of foxes okay. as well. Vanessa so. and Eliza. And I saw okay. Ernest last night when we pulled in. The skunk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's living in the retired chicken coop. Oh, gosh. It's like, it's a zoo. It's a menagerie. Yeah. Anyway, back, back to Cornwallis. <laughs> it's bad. Okay, so if this is somebody's first episode, <laughs> don't adjust your... <laughs> anything this is the way it goes we haven't just lost our minds no okay. so here is my so this is working brilliantly now right so that's that's good keeping everything and straight. you could even out sorry oh yeah i'm doing okay. a good job helping but, yeah you could do a third a third thing in here and still keep them all separate yes this is brilliant yeah so if and you had like fun. little bobbin balls for right. like color work and stuff like that so this is uh so the sleeves are bottom up um, in the flat, I'm going through the increases in this case until I get to the raglan. And uh, I just made all the edges the same. So I'm not going to talk about these round edges anymore. I made them all the same. So whatever way I decide to fix them, it'll all be uniform because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll choose what way I'm going to do. I still haven't decided exactly okay. what I'm doing. So but. not bad summer progress. No, and it's much, it's, a, it's uh, on these really steamy days, it's good to knit the cotton. Yeah, it's been a bit hot and steamy, and our internet hasn't been that great, so we've all been going to bed at 9. Yes, at, because at the latest. <laughs> because there, you can't watch TV and knit. What are you going to do? I'm on my third book since I quit Candy Crush. Okay. And it's a big, thick one. Wow, it. have you really read that much? Yeah. Yeah. 
It's really something. And I, I know everybody thought that I was exaggerating to the lesser side. I really didn't feel like I was spending that much time. I cannot believe you've read three books. Yes. And knit. Yes. I knit quite a lot. It's just the interact. It's not the time. It's not the time that you actually spend. It's that you stop, and then you pick up your phone, and then you play. Because I'm not that. I wasn't that great, so I didn't take me. <laughs> it didn't take me long to go through five lives. So it's not like I spent like like sometimes it would be all over in fifteen minutes. But then you just take a quick scroll of your Facebook, and wow. you just look a little bit at Instagram, and oh, there's an email. What's happening right. there? So by the time, I, I figure that by the time you spent your 15 minutes playing your my five lives, I've actually wasted 45 minutes. Wow. Because of all the other distractions. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty, like, shocked slash impressed yes. slash imagine. So, you know, and, like, with the children on the iPads and stuff like that, like the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this book that I'm reading is called The Chestnut Man, and it was um, Janet that works with us lent it to me and I couldn't um I would <laughs> play my candy cry lies when I went to bed and then I would read before I wanted to sleep because I was bad. but then I would fall asleep and I'd get three pages in and it's one of these um uh they're in oh, Denmark I think so one of the you know northern European mystery murder mysteries okay. so of that style right of, and I, there were so many characters and so many things going on that are all starting to come together now that I got through it that I couldn't I couldn't keep the book straight in my head who's and they've all got three pages Danish, at a time yeah okay and they've all got Danish names so I'm like okay, which one is this this one's married and the you know so not names that are familiar to us right and um so I I said to Jen I said either I'm starting to you know lose my mind but I can't get that book I can't even get into it because I can't because she thought it was a really good book and so I just started it over I just completely completely started it over and I'm I'm halfway through it and it's fine I can understand it perfectly it's not like this is fascinating yes fascinating and scary a little bit it's a little bit um yeah scary disturbing disturbing yeah. yeah Huh? Yeah. Well, I don't hardly do anything on my phone anymore because I just don't. I'm 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 I broke up with it. <laughs> but uh, I used to play Candy Crush, and believe me, I played a lot more than you did. Yeah. Because I learned how to reset the date so that your five lives would come back for free as many times as you wanted. <laughs> so yeah. That's not even. So I wasn't about that. like that. Like I was kind of a uh, Candy Crush light user. Right. I played it every day, but and I, I mean, it's it. not enriching your life. Whereas no. a book. Yeah. Really might be. Yeah. I always learn things from books, even if it's just something about Denmark or yeah. Danish culture or whatever. <laughs> Do you remember what country the book is? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Denmark. Learn what country it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Denmark. Wow. Okay. Well, that's but, fascinating. Uh, yeah. But I, and I love to read. Like I had a, I used to, when I lived in a bigger place, I had a huge library and I, I thought I just didn't like reading anymore, but it's actually, it was just, it was wasting time. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. good job. Well done then. Yeah. That's really... Kick that yeah. candy crush habit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's scary pretty... the electronics, how they can suck you in. Yeah. And how addictive they are. Yes. It, it kind of, uh, the first, uh, couple days I was like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't have it anymore. But then I wouldn't pick up my phone either. Yeah. So it actually, um, Two killed two birds with two one stone. Two killed both. Yeah. Because if I wasn't going to do that... I would always just say, well, it's only going to take me 15 minutes. I'm just going to, for a little break. And that's what I would do for my break and my knitting as well, is do that. And then it takes you a few minutes to get back. And so now, um, and I think I was also getting, um, it was also having some repetitive use oh. issues just because then you're scrolling and stuff like that. And, and uh, I'm knitting more, reading. And now I read to, to break. So the reading is... Like, let's say I read for half an hour and then I go back to my knitting, but I'm not moving my hands or my oh. fingers either. I'm reading and I'm getting through a great book and my knitting is not suffering. In fact, I'm doing more knitting than I was before. Wow. Well, yeah. So much better. Yes. I mean, this stuff is designed to stimulate parts of your brain that create, I mean, you yeah. know, it's like bright colors. Ooh, you yeah. know, it's like, maybe I'm going to win. It's no joke. Holy yeah. smokes. Okay. Well, speaking of learning things. Right. So... 
appreciate all the sympathy for the Sunday cardigan, <laughs> but let me tell you something. This is why we need to get the forum really up and running, our community, because there is no knitting problem that this community, I know, us, it's amazing, cannot solve. So, it's amazing. if you knit your sweater too tight and, you, and your boobs are hanging out of it, the number of things you can do, so I can't go through them all. There was literally probably 25 different suggestions, half of which I cannot do because I had already given back the yarn. Right. Um, or not given back, but I, I forwarded my yarn along to someone else making the pattern and... Uh, she graciously offered to send it back, but I don't. I don't need it back. Yeah. Um. I didn't block the sweater aggressively mm. by horizontally because I actually didn't anticipate there being an issue. So mm. I haven't even tried that yet. But what I think I'll do is put a button to the inside of the band backwards and add one buttonhole and just invisibly seal it up here, or put little snaps yeah. on the inside invisibly. And then if it does block out looser or get looser with wear, I can always take them off. And to be clear, it's still fits you really i mean other you need the button placement done <laughs> yeah but you're um well, it's not the like the sweater and shoulders and everything yeah it's good. just not what you expected it's not at all what i envisioned yeah. but you know in that bright of a color too maybe a fancier version of it is more appropriate yeah like if i'm, I'm going to be schlepping around the house and it maybe i want it to be a gray yeah. or brown or something i mean if i spilled my hot chocolate on that i'd be upset yeah it's beautiful yeah. Yeah. So it is more of a like a fancy sweater. I don't maybe. know if you saw. I answered a question in the forum about the buttons for it. Somebody wanted okay. a suggestion for the buttons, and they were asking plain or or fancy like mother of pearl. Right. But you know, you could do either. Yes. It's. I wouldn't go with wooden. No. Because that's more. You know, you think of right. wooden and Aaron and right. like those kind because of, it's not rustic. Right. It's just. It's just. Uh, so it's a little bit more. Well, it could look more rustic depending on the yarn you use. But yes. in my case, I certainly wouldn't have gone with a plain, uh, live edge button or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but you could. Um, you could do. Uh, if you had like fantastic buttons, like I'm picturing. Um, this this uh, knitter was talking about mother of pearl. You can get mother of pearl with that light pink sheen, mm -hmm. bluish sheen. If you had that color, mm -hmm. you put that on, and they're lovely feature mm -hmm. buttons. It would be it would be lovely. Or the, what you did was more less low contrast, right. and they still look great. And I'm just so. looking up because our buttons are up here, and I see we have the perfect color of those same buttons for when you knit it too. Yeah, have it in a navy blue. Yeah, those are nice buttons. I yeah. actually really like the buttons I yeah. used. Yeah. So. So some of the other suggestions were, of course, add a button band to the button band right. to add width. You could uh, you could pick up and add it mm -hmm. because the button bands were incorporated, so nothing's been picked up yet. Right. Um, so it would be nice and clean and tidy. Mm -hmm. um, people suggested crocheting on one. Yes, yeah. of course, you could do that. All snaps, hooks, eyes. The inside button I thought was really smart. Like yeah. I would, you know, just you can put a button on backwards, put it in yeah. here, and then button it like this, yeah. and it's just to hold it uh, right. steady over the bust area. Um, so it was, it was just amazing reading them. Yeah. Like all, yeah. uh, really good knitters all in our group. Yes. So yeah. once we get the forum up and running, we can do like a little self-help thread. Right. Uh, where I everybody... like the sneaking one. Did you read that one? No. Oh, okay. So there's the, from the, I think it's Prairie Firebird. That's her rivalry name. We've t had right. questions from her. She's obviously a very adventurous and accomplished knitter okay. because she was talking about the hem. Right. and um, cutting it right. and steaking it and then knitting a wedge and just decrease to you get to right. I was like, yes, it would work. <laughs> it would work. But I don't know. You have to be brave for that. Yeah, well, that's oh, one where you three need... Different I think I did see that one, but it, they all required yarn. And I yeah. don't have yarn. Like, that's yeah. part of the exacerbating issue is that I don't have yarn. Yeah. Because, yes, that I could just add and then move the buttons over. Yeah. Might skew it slightly, but it yeah. would give me more uh, more room. But... I'm just going to fix it with uh, a way to... I think the, the one here, I'll add something to hold it closed. The others, I think it will eventually yeah. give enough just to make those suitable. Yeah. And it's a lovely sweater. And I don't know how much I'm going to wear it closed anyway, yeah. but right. it just wasn't my vision for it, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> all right, so uh, thank you for all of that. And mm -hmm. again, like it's I'm amazing. just amazed at the knowledge base. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited yeah. to get the new forum format picked out and really get that rolling because I think we should have a questions for our community mm -hmm. thread uh, when people encounter Help knitting each issues. Because we yeah. go, I wouldn't have caught with half of what yeah. we got back. Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, I'm always um, surprised when I get a comment about like the helical knitting, or which I didn't know about, that came from the community, but other things that we've done that, because um, you know what you know, 
and then you have a track I think that you you learn and you learn add things to your toolbox all along but there's so many like a multitude of ways to do everything in knitting mm-hmm. so somebody you know for the it's just so enriching I find yeah and it's all been passed along from co-knitter to co-knitter yeah like it's pretty cool yeah it's it's really like a, a body of knowledge that, yes yeah yeah it's really it's cool neat. and there's so many different approaches yeah to, I mean just if you just even look at the way to make a knit stitch for example and then right. on top of that all of the finishing techniques and the yeah. fixing techniques and stuff yeah. it's amazing yeah so it was really really neat to yeah. read them all so thank you and of course we always appreciate your comments so do keep commenting it helps yeah. our videos perform well yeah okay so now we're up to the shop update so first we're going to do a little bit of a history like lesson <laughs> so for those of you who aren't already familiar uh there's a woolen mill on the island called mccoslands and they make wool blankets mm-hmm. and uh they've been around doing it for a long time and you've seen them i think episode two or three we had a stack of wool blankets because we like to go and try to pick them up at value village at one any time wool blanket any wool blanket because yeah. at one time there were other mills even on pei producing wool blankets yes uh, so when people clean homes out, you know, as, uh, older people pass away, they take the blankets to Value Village and we go in there and clean them out. Yeah. Um, because wool blankets are very valuable. Of course, they'll last nearly forever yeah. and wool is wool. It doesn't yeah. change over time. As long as they've been well cared for, they yeah. still do the trick in your bed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, McCausland started as a sawmill and a grist mill in 1870. Mm-hmm. And then in 1932, they made their first blanket. So Archibald McCausland was in charge at the time, and he started out making some other small wool items, but then he thought those were outselling other things that they did uh, revenue-wise, so then he got into blankets. Oh, okay. So it's the only mill in Atlanta, Canada still producing 100% wool blankets, Mm -hmm. and... uh, they're now in the sixth generation yes. of having uh, the family work. Monica. In the, yes, think, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> work in the business. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And they're using some really old equipment, like some th- pieces from 1949 and things like that. I thought uh, I thought the first equipment for whatever they were doing was like earlier, like 1910 or something like that. Is that right? That's or still not? working? I don't know. Oh, okay. Because they had a big fire and there was only one thing left. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. what? Yeah. So I'm not sure about the ages of all yeah. their equipment. No, no. But I just I knew that it was there. I mean, when you go in, yeah. it's amazing because yeah. it's all like well, going clickety clack. Yeah, clack. it has not been updated other than to put motors on it because oh, it was originally okay. run by steam. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, and okay, so or great. water or steam, and yeah. so but uh, some of it burned in the fire, and then others was retrofitted with motors. Oh, okay. So, but the but the. The frames and things are really, really old. It's yeah. not like modern industrial right. milling equipment by any right. stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So anyway, um, so what we decided to do this year was take, because people always come and they say, how many sheep do you have? And we're like 63. And they're like, wow, and that's enough for your mill, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> we buy tons, literally yeah. tons of it from other island farmers. Yeah. But so what we decided to do with the wool from our 63 sheep mm-hmm. this year was have blankets made by McCoslin's. Right. And, uh, you know, it took a lot of extra effort to arrange all that because we could have just carted it in here and made yarn with it, but we wanted to do something more special with it because really, if our wool comes off the sheep and goes into the mix with everything else, you don't know if you're knitting with ours or not. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's mixed in with all the other island wool we purchased. Whereas in this case, uh, we know exactly where this stuff came from. Now, some of it was blended with other wool of McCausland, right? right? To add the color. Yeah. But these were made especially for us. And I'm sorry for the crinkling. We're not going to talk while I crinkle okay. so that I can cut the crinkling out. Okay. So we're just going to show you some of the colors. So this is a throw size, mm-hmm. which is pretty generous. Light blue tweed. Yeah. Oh, it's so squishy. It oh my gosh. Like... They're so squishy and delightful. Yeah. I don't want to get my lip gloss on it. Yeah. Um, so this is a throw size. Um, oh, the dimensions. Cool down. Yeah. The dimensions <laughs> and everything are listed online. Um, and this is a light blue tweed. We even designed yes. little labels. We got little Fleece and Harmony special edition woven by McCausland's tags on yeah. them. Um, so all of the white that's contained in this is from our actual sheep. Right. And they're lovely. Mm-hmm. So there's one smaller called a lap blanket. Mm-hmm. And then we also got queen size blankets, which we're not going to attempt to unfurl out here. here. Um, but I just want to show a few more colors. So this is yeah. the light blue tweed. Yeah. This Okay, so that was sort of the tweed striped pattern, and then there's a checkerboard pattern, um, and there's a bunch more colors online, and of course, 
the link to purchase these is in the show notes. I'm not listing them publicly just yet. Um, we do have quite a few of them, but they're special edition and we always like to give all of our viewers a first crack mm-hmm. at things. So go into the show notes, click on the blanket link, and that's how you'll find them yeah. and see all the other colors because there's pinks and a burgundy and yeah. green and blue and mm-hmm. gray and there's all kinds of colors. So this is what's known as the checkerboard pattern. This is another throw, yeah. same size as the last one, but just a different pattern. And you get to see what it looks like with a slightly darker color. And again, yeah. all of the white fleece is from our sheep. Yeah. And it's wonderfully soft. Mm-hmm. So yeah. fun. Where's the tag? Love the tag. We designed the tag. Just a little bit for Kim did primarily. So uh, fleece and harmony. Yeah. And the yarn and edging and Yeah, oh so nice. beautiful. Yeah. So this is what they make. And uh they do have new machinery for the. They did a project a couple of years ago and upgraded the blanking, the blanky, <laughs> the weaving <laughs> machinery for right. the blankets, and they're just they're just gorgeous. So if you like wool blankets, yeah, this is the thing. And mm-hmm. because most of our viewers in the U are in the U S. and our dollar is crappy right now, yeah. these are priced in Canadian dollars. Yeah. Um, and they are over our free shipping threshold. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get a pretty huge discount on the exchange and then have it shipped out to you for free. Yeah. So it's worth going to have a look using the link in the show notes uh, if you're in the market for a wool blanket. And they make a lovely keepsake. And they last forever as yeah. long as you look after them properly. Mm-hmm. Now nobody can see us. Oh, okay. <laughs> we need to another bag. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so super fun and mm-hmm. satisfying. They're amazing. Because even when we knit with our own yarn, we don't know that it's, if it's our sheep or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's a like, little bit of our sheep and a little bit of something. Maybe, know, depending, depending on when it was made. Or, but we sheep. don't remember if we yeah. grab a ball off. So this is Jackie's a really... sheep. Like, yeah, to yeah. me, this is like a really super local, like from in within our acreage kind yeah. of product. And it's really, really cool just to yeah. see how beautiful and soft they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. And they're from our own sheep that we look yeah. after. So that, it's really neat. And we're obviously going to keep one each as a little keepsake with yeah. our our name on it and stuff so that was super fun getting that done and big thanks to McCausland's mm-hmm. for giving us amazing service yes we <laughs> the instructions were not that simple yeah we had like a bunch of different colors and stuff we wanted uh to have a good selection and I mean not didn't get a ton made so and we probably... had no idea like even how many we could get or right. what, what would be the best yeah. sizes to get so they really yeah. helped us a lot so we sent different. the wool up on a courier truck in yeah. big totes and got all of these beautiful blankets back yeah pretty satisfying yeah it's really They're neat lovely. yeah so we hope some of you will pick some up because uh, we're very very proud of them mm-hmm. so uh, and it was a fun project yeah all right, so the only other um, shop update is we got in the new Kate Davies books, or we mm-hmm. got some not new Kate Davies books, but we managed to start carrying them again, right. and they sold really quickly. Yes. So we've already placed a second order, of course, right. and on that we're adding a couple more titles. So we're, one is the story one. Yeah, I was going to say, we're counting on you, Sam. Right. <laughs> it's already been shit. I know, he's already yeah. got them out the door. He's right on it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure they're wrapped beautifully and yeah. we'll be so thrilled when they arrive just like we were last time. Right. But we've added to our collection now the Book of Haps, mm-hmm. um, the book called Shore, mm-hmm. and Shetland Colors. Right. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So we've added three more titles. Yes. Because the ones we got last time sold so quickly. Yeah. So uh, link to those is in the show notes as well. So you can go check them out. They're beautiful books. We even had a f- few people come in in person and pick them up yeah. um, over the last week. So I think everybody's really happy to find a place that carries them because right. they're just beautiful yeah. uh, so we're happy to have that too all right so then we had one ask us anything question right from our a dear friend yes. heather that yeah. we met at knit east last fall yeah. almost a year ago now yeah, yeah. lace wing on heather is yeah. a ravelry name yeah she's a beautiful knitter mm-hmm. she obviously doesn't play candy crush no she's very no prolific. time for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> She knits a ton right. and is just a beautiful knitter. So she is uh, has some Iona Bunny left in Amethyst Brooch, mm-hmm. and she's going to knit a cropped cardigan and wanted yeah. to know it's knit, uh, I think she said from the bottom up flat. So she wanted to know about alternating skeins, if we would recommend that, and how would you do it? She imagined we would recommend yes, alternating. Yes, definitely. Definitely re- alternate skeins. Right. And in the flat... You just alternate no up problem. the side. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you carry up the side. You, you do always, two rows. Always a alternate. Row, yeah, yeah, a row over and a row back. Yeah. Then pick up the next strand. Right. And it just makes kind of like a little beaded edge. But yeah. it's, uh, I guess it wouldn't be in the seam in that case. But if it's a cardigan, it's probably a button band or something. Yeah. So probably picking up a button band along yeah. the edge. Yeah. But I just want to explain something that um, one of our knit, regular knit night attendees asked over Facebook or email or something in the last week. And it was like, I have... Uh, you know, two skeins are very similar. Do I still need to alternate or so? Yes, because even if you have one skein, you can hit a rhythm with the color. Yeah. Uh, and you can get pooling. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's not much you can do if it's a one skein project, you're stuck working with that one skein. But even if you had two, uh, it's better to break up that color so that you don't get pooling. So mm -hmm. even if they match nearly perfectly, you're unlikely to hit a rhythm mm -hmm. where your round around matches the repeat in yeah. the color yeah. and you end up getting a blob of yeah. color. And yeah. you'd be amazed how much it can happen. Because yeah. you think, never in a million years am I going to hit the distance yes. perfectly so that this dark gray blob shows up in the same spot in every row. But it happens all the time. If you were trying to do it, you wouldn't be, you able, wouldn't to. be able to. Yeah. But so, so think of you're making a blob, uh, which can happen, because the distance that you're going around your, your row is matches the distance of that color distribution yeah. in the skein. So if you had the one skein, you've got the blob. If you're alternating another skein in there, at least your blob is only on every second row. Yeah. And that will break it's it up. up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with hand-dyed, kettle-dyed, variegated yarns, alternate. Yeah. It's just going to make a better result. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe color blobs aren't the worst thing that can happen, but if it's right here, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. not going to be very happy with it. So you always <laughs> alternate. And with our yarns, even I'm alternating the solids too. Yeah, of course. Because, because that tonal, all like it is so is a pot with a big burner underneath. Yeah. So the middle is hotter than the outside. Mm -hmm. So the color's not going to be the same. Yeah. yeah. They're all in the same pot, but the middle is hotter. Yeah. So, and I mean, I do rotate them around a little bit to make it as even as possible, but there's absolutely no way they will ever 100% match. The only way to do that is to dye it before carding yes because then the carter whips all the different color variations up like you know whipping cream in a right. kitchen aid right and of course then it's very even yeah it's been distributed and reorganized and smoothed several out times several times over right. like through 10 or 12 drums or whatever yeah. then it's even yeah your batter is well mixed yeah but if you're blobbing it into a pot in any way shape or form or something that's unevenly heated mm -hmm. there is no way it can 100 percent match right so yeah i hope that yeah. Solves the <laughs> that's the end of the alternating debate. Yeah. You must alternate. Yeah. And it's not that I'm a bad dyer or anything like that. It, you know, there's a burner in the middle. Mm -hmm. The burner is not as big as the vat. Yeah. And even the way the metal conducts heat on the sides is even hotter. Yes. So there's like a, a center heat and then there's a cooler section around here yeah. and then right close to the edge it often strikes mm -hmm. quite dark. And sometimes the the um there's more than one fleece in a batch yes. too. Yeah. So we, I mean, part of the part of the thing, the charm, I guess, of our yarn is that it's not over processed. Right. So we process it as, um, you know, as as little as possible, so that you get all the different textures and everything. But the the fleeces take up the dye, dye differently, differently as well. Sure. The fleeces themselves are a different color to start out yeah. with. Yeah. 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 So there's lots of factors that go into it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why we always like our heart breaks when somebody says, uh, oh, I'm short of skate. And we're like, eh. <laughs> not going to match. <laughs> not going to match. Not exactly. going to match at all. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, there's ways around it if you yeah. need the extra skein to, to fit it yeah. in, but don't knit down to the, your last four inches and then, right. uh, you know, try to find a skein. Although I will say all of that said, I had to die after the fact for my Teradel hat and you can't really tell yet because for one thing I'm not showing it today but I cannot believe how close the yarn matches oh really but it's a dark color yeah. so it's a little bit easier but yeah. I mean I was like wow never in a million years did I think that this would work out this well oh you great. really can't tell oh great. yeah I don't know how because you started with one skein yeah and, and it, it wasn't big enough oh, and then I went okay. and dyed another one. Oh, okay yeah and it just worked yeah <laughs>
<laughs> it's like a miracle. Now, yeah. I did alternate the two of them together, but you literally can't see a thing. Yeah. Oh, well, but, good. I mean, darker colors are, of course, easier, mm-hmm. and I'm using a night without stars. So yeah. when I run out of Seagull, which I also think I'm going to, then the challenge will be on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All my projects are a mess. Oh. All, all well. right. So that's the answer to alternating in the flat. Pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Not as tricky as in the round. No. But now the round is not tricky anyway. Because helical. Because like helical knitting is like right. just been some kind and of And that's what I was using to do my hat. Helical knitting yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Which I finally understood stand fully. For some reason I, I had a little problem grasping that concept for a while. <laughs> what do you mean? Like I hadn't done it myself. I oh, watched the okay. tutorial. But yeah. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. You have to actually do it to be like, oh, this isn't that complicated. Yeah. You're just moving it over the needle. Yeah. yeah. And the key point of it all. So some people have asked about um, if they have a, I think we've already talked about this, but you have some kind of a, an operation that you have to do, like make one or decrease or whatever. And if it hits in, cause in the video, I recommend it three stitches to you change the anyway look at the video and you'll know what I mean but you do, it's not really about the three stitches it's about making sure that there's not a chance that you twist the yarns when you change the change the yarn from the one mm-hmm. you're using to the new one and you can do that in one stitch mm-hmm. that's but, what I'm doing one stitch yeah, yeah so it doesn't have to be three but three guarantees you almost that you, um, I guess anything's possible, but you, you rarely would make a mistake by mm-hmm. twisting the yarns on three when you're slipping the three stitches. But. Yeah, so it's a really cool technique. And really it makes alternating almost not a thing. Yes, I mean, you do have multiple balls to handle, but I mean, you know, it, yeah. it's so worth it. Yeah. Just, it's kind of like purling. Just accept it. It's part of knitting. Yeah. Stop asking if you don't have to do it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just accept it. That's part of it. You yeah. can use hand-dyed yarn alternating as part yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. All right. All right. So, before we say goodbye, we want to say, well, thank you for being here, first of all. Yes. And we hope you liked our video. And if you do, please give us a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do so and hit the notification bell. And we love all your comments. We're doing a pretty good job of answering them. I still have a few more to go from last episode because now we have to do it twice as often. Yeah. Uh, But please comment and uh, we'll see you again next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everybody.